Привет, друзья! Добро пожаловать на мой канал. In Russian it means Hello friends, welcome to my channel. This video build will be about the new Russian 4 Plus Plus generation multi-role fighter aircraft, the Sukhoi Su-35S Flanker. For this build, I choose the 172 scale gray wall hobby kit. The molds of this kit are amazing. Every part is highly detailed. There are no visible scratches or molding imperfections. The Greywall Hobby brand did an awesome job on this model. I'm amazed, and I'm sure I will buy some more models from them. The instruction manual is very helpful. Every workstep is focused to the smallest detail. The kit includes three camouflage schemes. Two of them are in a light dark blue camo, and one in a dark gray light blue camo. The decal sheet looks amazing. It also includes decals for the cockpit, radar, hard points and air-to-air -air missiles. The kit has its own small photo edge parts, but I will upgrade the model with Eduard photo edge parts for the cockpit and other external details. Great! I'm very excited! I hope I will enjoy the build without any problems. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for not missing any new notifications. Ok, let's get started. I started to build the flanker with the cockpit. I cut out all cockpit parts from the plastic sprue, cleaned them with a sharp knife and a file. The plastic is very workable and the cockpit gluing process was pretty fast. The K36D5 ejection seat had the most pieces. For gluing I used glues for plastic like Agama, Rebel or Mr. Cement. I already mentioned that I want to upgrade the cockpit with Edward photo edge parts. Unfortunately, I have to remove some beautiful details of the cockpit so I can glue the PE parts. The good news is that the plastic is really workable. It is neither too soft or too hard. For this work step, I use chisels and knives for model craft. Next, I file the surfaces and smooth them out with a P600 sandpaper. The cockpit parts are ready for painting. For attaching, I use plastic sticks and masking tape. Working with chemicals is always harmful to health, so always use a mask with a carbon filter. The main cockpit color is the Mr. Color C74 Air Superiority Blue. With this paint is the most work. Now I paint all the details with a paintbrush. There are lots of shades of black, dark grey and anthracite colors. Now I apply a dark grey and metallic dry brush and seal the cockpit parts with varnish. For highlighting pen lines I use a dark wash from Mick Jimenez. The wash dries out after 20 minutes. For removing, I use a cotton swab and amino thinner. At the end of the cockpit feathering, I apply a final layer of mud varnish. Now I can start to apply the Edubot photo edge parts. First, I glue the avionics side panels. For a strong bond, I use cyanide acrylate super glues like Loctite or Patex. But you can also use other brands also. 
The Loctite liquid works mostly for me. It doesn't dry so quickly and I have plenty of time to adjust the part into place. And of course, if you're not a big fan of super glues, you can use clear varnish or PVA glue. Now I can assemble the cockpit together. It always amazed me how the Eduard Forage parts can bring any cockpit to life. I am very satisfied. The next step is to paint all necessary parts of the landing gear base and air intakes. I rather paint it right now, because after assembling, some parts will be very difficult to get to. Mostly, I'm talking about all the hydraulic hoses and electric cables. I must paint them by hand. Next, I apply a layer of varnish and wash the landing gear base with a black wash. For removing the excess wash, I use a cotton swab and emanothena. Now I can assemble and glue the landing gear base and the cockpit to the fuselage. The lower and the upper fuselage assembly was easy. Both parts fit perfectly together. The parts have a simple clicking system, so all I have to do is to apply some glue. The fit on the wings was pretty good, but to be sure, I used some modeling clamps. Next is the air intake assembly. And again, all parts fit perfectly together. Honestly, I prefer cheaper models than the expensive ones. But I have to say that this kit is worth the money. It's really fun to build. After a quick assembly, I glue the air intakes to the fuselage. The rear part of the main landing gear is a little bit too difficult to assemble, but that is nothing I can't handle. I have a habit of putting weights into the radar cone. For sure, it will be very uncomfortable to find out that the model stains on its tail. Next, I work on the flanker's leading edges, flap rounds and the ECM Kibini parts. I decided to glue them in an extended parking position. Maybe, when I will have more free time, I will create a small diorama to it. 
I wish I'd had more free time, but surely you know from personal experience that we pursue our hobby then when it's time left. I think that the flanker looks more cool with the big hominid pods instead of the wing tip hard points. Next, I glue all additional hard points on the wings and lower fuselage. This time, I will equip the Suhoi with a mixed weapons load, and for this purpose, I will use the four 500kg FAB 500M62 high explosive bombs from my Zvezda MiG 29S model. For the missile load, I will use two R73s and R27ER infrareds and two radar guided R77s. Next, I work on the Eduard Photo Edge heads-up display. All parts are glued together with PVA glue. This work step was very tricky and took me a longer time than I expected. Next, I glue the front canopy section to the fuselage and prepare the model for filling. For filling some areas, I use Mr. White Putty from Mr. Hubby. And I dilute the putty with a little bit of filler. There is not that much to fill on this model, but I rather check all surfaces twice. Ah, found some. Gotcha. The putty dried out. For sanding, I use sandpaper with a grain size from P600 up to 1000. After sanding, I wash the whole model with a warm soapy water. The flanker is still not ready for the paint job. Before that, I mask the cockpit canopy with masking tape and liquid mask. And, and I mask the cockpit canopy from the inner side also. The liquid mask chemical dries very fast. Of course, don't forget to wash the paintbrush immediately after applying. And there is more masking. This time, I mask the air intake with a sponge and the landing gear base with masking tape. If you saw my Mirage F1 video, I did there a reverse masking. Both masking techniques are good, it's on you which one you choose. The model is ready for surfacing. To unify its surface, I use Mr. Surface 1000. After surfacing, I highlight the model's pen lines with a pre shading technique. The black paint is highly diluted in a 1 to 4 ratio to leveling thinner. I will use the black paint and paint all parts such as the wheels and jet nozzles. The jet nozzles are also painted with a burnt iron, steel and other metal colors. Before I start to paint the flanker schemo, I must paint the engine covers. The first metallic color is burnt iron. Then, I paint the small panels by hand with aluminum and I cover them with masking tape. The next color is silver. The Sukhoi engine covers look really cool in reality. Lots of burnt, oily and dirty areas. I'm still fighting to improve my skills to achieve such wonderful looking surfaces. Well, practice is practice. Next, I add a highly diluted layer of gold and cover paint and at the end, a mix of blue and aluminum. The whole painting process is repeated on the jet nozzles. And at the end, I paint the inner side of the jet nozzles with a white paint to imitate burn of metal from the afterburner. 
To protect the engine cover's paint job, I add a layer of clear varnish and mask it with masking tape. It will help me not to overspray it with the camouflage paint. And now it's time for the camouflage. The SU-35S saw some action in Syria. Since the model will be equipped with a mix of missiles and bombs, I chose a compact approved machine. The Red 06 placed in Heminin Air Base from year 2014. At first, I will paint the model surface with a color mix of Mr. Color C20 Light Blue and C73 Aircraft Gray. The shade is mixed in a ratio 80 to 20%. With this shade is the most work. I paint the whole lower fuselage, the big areas of the upper one, horizontal, vertical stabilizers and landing gear colors. The colors of the shade are matte and have a denser pigment. I recommend to dilute the paint more. Best is a 1 to 4 ratio to let it thin. The second camo paint is the C-73 aircraft grain. And the third camo shade is a mix of Mr. Color C-1 white, C-5 blue and C-2 black. The shade is mixed in a ratio of 70% white, 28% of blue and 2% of black. Now I will focus on painting the radar cone and the anti-glare stripe over the cockpit canopy. Since I use an airbrush, I don't paint these surfaces with a paintbrush anymore. I mask all necessary areas with masking tape and overspray it. Sometimes this technique is faster, but in some more difficult surfaces it's more time consuming. But the final result is worth it. You can see here what I'm talking about. There are dark grey lines over the front section of the fuselage. The lines continue to the wing's leading edges. The whole masking took me about 2 hours to complete. And at the end, the paint job took me only a few minutes. And here is another example. Now I mask details such as the engine panels, chaff and flare dispensers, small accessible panels and the 30mm cannon flash cover. As I said, the smallest things take the most time. And another thing. Same time in the whole paint job process, I also paint the Fankel's weapons, landing gear, landing gear covers, wheel rims and other details. Phew, now that was fun, wasn't it? Finally, I can remove the whole masking tape and add a gloss coat of Mr. Color GX Wanted Super Clear. Maybe you are asking yourself, why a glossy coat? It's because the next step are the water slide decals. The grey wall hobby decals are great. They are easy to apply and stick very good. I apply the decals using tweezers and a toothpick. I apply a little bit of water to the place of the application. Next, I apply the decal and use the Revel softener chemical to unify the decal with the surface. For a better fit of the decal, 
I remove all the water and the air bubbles with a cotton swab. Boy oh boy, there were so many decals. It took me a few days to apply them all, and now I seal them with a layer of glossy varnish coat. Next is the weathering. I googled some pictures of the Red 06 and it looks it isn't that much weathered. But there are some visible areas of the weathering starting to appear. First, I apply the Tamiya's Accent Color Black Wash over all panel lines. The wash leaves a very good coverage in panels. And I remove the excessive wash with a cotton swab soaked in the eminent thinner. As you can see, removing the wash is very easy. And now, my favorite oil paints. Since the SU-35 is a new machine, I only create some weathering on wings and engine areas imitating oil and fuel leaks. Now I can seal the weathering with a final layer of mixed glossy and matte varnish. The flank is ready for the assembly. First, I assemble the landing gear, wheels and landing gear covers. For this work step, I use liquid superglue. The bond is stronger and assembly faster. You can also use other glues, but I prefer super glues. The landing gear cover assembly was a bit tricky. The hydraulic pistons for the landing gear covers took me the most time. The parts were very small and hard to handle. Next. I continue on gluing the adjustable jet nozzles. The nozzles are equipped with articulated joints. There is no need to glue them. I really like this option. I can simply move the nozzles in any direction, but I move them into a parked position. Now I continue on gluing the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. The assembly was really fast. It reminds me on a simplified clicking system. After the stabilizers are finished, I glue the weapon hardpoints, bombs and air-to-air -air missiles. One of the last steps of the flanker's assembly is the cockpit canopy. The Edward photo edge kit includes very nice details of the canopy frames and mirrors. For gluing these metal parts I use PVA glue. For me it's the best solution. The bond is relatively strong and I have plenty of time to put the parts into place. Now I glue the cockpit canopy in place. I must be very careful because the clear canopy plastic is very fragile and I could damage it with a stronger pressure. At the very end of the assembly I glue the static electricity discharges from my stock of edge parts from my Suhoi and MiG models. And of course these small parts must be painted also. Alright. The Greywall Hobbies 1272 scale Suhoi SU-35S Flanker E is finished. This build was absolutely wonderful. I hope you liked this video. Please subscribe to my channel, like or leave a comment down below. If you are interested to see more of my work, join me on Facebook or Instagram. There is a link in the description. Thank you for watching guys and see you next time.